Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different that's camera related but isn't a camera itself. And that's actually this Monoprice MP uh, Printer Select. This is the Mini. And that's pretty cool. But I'm bringing this to you guys because this is the device that has helped me very much in prototyping the Ham camera, the box camera that's coming out this fall. And if you'd like to know more about that, stick around. Friends, you know how it goes. If you like this type of content, please don't be afraid to hit that like button and subscribe. It helps me out quite a bit. It lets me know that you enjoy what I'm doing and it, you know, encourages me to bring you more great content. So, uh, what have you got to lose? It's free. <laughs> As we're looking around this printer, I haven't really printed a lot of crazy stuff with it. I just did the calibration prints and I'm going to share with you my general overall experience about not ever using a 3D printer and what I have learned so far. So let's jump right into that. Number one, the printer works quite well. Out of the box, setup was simple, easy, and fast. In fact, I've got a couple of cute things to show you. The first thing that I printed was actually the little Nico, the little kitty cat, right? Uh, how cool is that? You know, just a nice little cat. And it looks nice. It's all, well, I mean, it's just, it's what you would expect. The print is a good quality print. There's not a lot of stringing. Um, it was able to produce this right off the bat with the included filament. And so that was cool. Of course, later on, I went ahead and printed up a Bodhi, you know, and uh, Bodhi is pretty nice too because a nice Bodhi means that your printer, once again, is, uh, is calibrated well. So right out of the box, the point is that the printer was able to print properly without a bunch of crazy setup. Leveling the bed was kind of difficult at first until I understood exactly what had to happen. But once I did, things became much, much simpler. And so I thought I'd share with you a little bit about what I've been doing with this printer. And the first thing is um, I've been creating a camera. And this was the actual first prototype. I did this entire prototype in SketchUp. And right now we're looking at the prototype without lenses. And this, of course, is a box camera, a modular box camera. So I had to create a couple of important pieces. And uh, it seems kind of simple, right? But I had to create a cartridge, a, a module that would accept film right uh, which is the cartridge i had to also create the actual box and i had to create the internal design for where the different reflective elements and things will go and then i had to make sure that it would all fit quite well now this can seem a little bit tough when you get right into it mainly because like how do you know it's going to print right i mean doesn't the print shrink a little bit uh, you know aren't those kinds of things that you'll notice and when i started printing I originally realized that it did shrink a little bit because of things I was reading on forums. So I was like increasing the mass of the scale of the print a little bit one way or the other. But what I found out was that that was completely not necessary. Cura, the software that ships with it, um, was able to accommodate that and actually printed just fine. Then I went into and found Cura, I think at 2.4 or whatever the newest version is, and uh, it even works even better. So I was able to go from prints like this to a much more high detailed kind of print right here. And uh, taking this off, you can see I've also switched. I went from a, a black PLA by Hatchbox to um, the wood PLA. And this is Work Steel PLA. And I once again, I upgraded the cartridge module and things like that uh, in order to work well for what I want it to. And then of course, nice press fit uh, fitting so that you could put the face plate, take it on and off. You can also notice here as we're continuing that I was able to get a little bit more detail and you can see in this one too there's quite a bit more detail and even if we flip it back around uh, we've even got a nice inner layer. Now what I've noticed here on the printing is that there's a lot of things that take place with your design of your 3D print that if you're a newcomer like me you might actually think is the printer but having some detail loss on the inside actually comes from not having your print settings set correctly because when you do you can have quite a bit more detail without uh, that that really weird lossness or even that pillowing that I was that I was looking at. So this has to do with setting your printer settings, uh, but also look at that, you know, real nice interior walls and stuff. So I was excited about that, and I want to show you a couple other ones. I even have another one where the detail continues even more with the with the nice print like that. So that looks good, and then and then a final. These are all draft copies. Um, a final front plate. So you can see kind of like the evolution of the front plate as it's come through here uh, different ways, which is, which is pretty cool. Really neat. So the reason I bought it was to make a camera. And so I guess the biggest question is, has this been helpful in making a camera? And without a doubt, absolutely. Of course, there's been a learning curve, right? Uh, it wasn't just jump right in and print. I had to learn 
about the software to use. I had to learn about the CAD software to use. I had to learn a little bit more about lenses and optics. But actually, the, the mathematics and the geometry of the lenses I had down pat pretty good. That's, that's a mathematical equation for your focal length and distances. But getting the printer to actually print this was something that was more challenging. And that's not because the printer was incapable of doing it. It's because there were some problems that I encountered. And these happen to be software related and a first time user related. And so what I encountered was that sometimes I would tell the thing to go print and the I would send the file over to the SD card. I'd put the SD card in here and I, I would select it from the file manager to print. And then it would print um, differently. It wouldn't print centered on the bed. It would try to print somewhere else on the bed and it would cause a, a whole you know confusion. What I found out from there was that actually uh, when you're setting up your print machine you must have a particular checkbox checked based on whether or not you've got a round or rectilinear print bed. And so what I'm saying is that there were a lot more user related things that you had to figure out on your own and the do-it-yourself community was very helpful but if you didn't know that, if you just think you're going to sit down and print with it, that can be a little tough. Another thing is the, um, the, there are some other things. I did have a time where the work steel filament that I was using right here actually caused a jam, right? And that was no fun. And so what do you do? You know, I mean, you got the, you, there's a jam at this point in time, you know? I mean, I'm stuck here with a printer that's not printing. So how do you fix that? And I did mine with a high E string guitar wire. Just heated up the PLA and stuck it through and seesawed it until I got the the big carbonization out and that seemed to work well. That also meant that I had to do things like remove the front fan and take the Bowden tube off and those things were interesting. I didn't mind doing them. I've been taking cameras and different things apart for a while but if you're a first time user the support for this is mostly text stuff that you'll read online and figure it out yourself and I'm okay with that. I had no problem jumping into that world but if you do have a problem with taking things that you paid for apart then that's something you have to consider before jumping into 3D printing. Uh, if you were to ask me, have I printed anything fun? I'd say yes. Everything that I've printed with my project that's going on right now has been excellent. I've had a great time. I have not printed anything extra extemporaneous or anything like that. I haven't printed anything out of the ordinary because I purchased this for a focus and I'm working on that project with it right now. The only things that I've printed extra are like I showed you earlier. I will tell you that I did notice some things I had some problems with um, the actual PLA sticking properly and it has a heated print bed and I, I couldn't understand why the PLA wasn't sticking. I didn't know that you had to actually go ahead and, and clean your print bed with alcohol or acetone. Um, I just was scraping it with a scraper so that helped quite a bit. Then when it still would not stick and I was having uh, first layer problems, I researched further and found that you needed a glue stick. Who knew? I started using a glue stick and I was getting great adhesion. And that was something that was strange because my first several prints out of this uh, printer, they, uh, they stuck fine without an issue. So I guess it's like maybe a build up thing. And I was just using the build plate with the build tack or whatever proprietary surface, print surface they have on it. And it seems to work fine. Let me just give you an example um, so that you can know how long I'm, I'm letting this thing print for. And I monitor it, uh, but I don't have a problem leaving it printing while I, I leave the house as long as the first layer is adhered and it's, it's got a nice bit of height to it. I haven't encountered anything crazy like that. But um, a cartridge like this is a 10 hour print, right? Because it prints in this orientation and there's a lot of support material that prints inside of here that you then have to clean out. In fact, it's such a crazy um, amount of print stuff. There are even some additional you know, like ways to print it that I've, I've moved my module into a two-piece operation. This is now in uh, about six hours, three hours for each side, and then I just glue them together. And I may move to ABS because you can poly weld it, uh, which is pretty cool, but um, who knows. However, uh, on its own, 10 hours together, six hours on two separate pieces. Compare that to this. This right here, if you can see this, this right here, this is a 16-hour uh, print. That's how long it takes for this to print right here. Boom from the inside and the outside. The support material comes off very easily. There's no problem, but it's 16 solid hours of print time. A faceplate for me, something like this, as a four hour print time. And let me get you a real nice one to look at so that you can see. Uh, here you go. Here's one as well. Both of these are right at four or five hours, just depending. And um, 
that's important because there's quite a bit of detail. We've got raised text here. We've got a logo that's actually written into it. We've got raised different um, uh, levels of height and relief on all this stuff. And it's pretty cool. I, I like it a lot. And it just takes some time. So the entire print production for one draft unit right now is upwards of 28 to 30 hours total time. And, um, you know, that's a little over a day if you print straight through. And uh, that can be a little disheartening, just depending on how you want to want to print. So keeping that in mind, you're going to have to print based on your timeline and your schedule. If you are going to get into some kind of pre-production prototyping, you're going to need to have enough to print uh, what you want in the timely manner. So if one's your machine, that's fine. I've also printed small knobs and gears. You can see another unit right here. And also different lenses. Um, here's a couple of my, my uh, lens designs. These are some lens holders that actually go into places like this on the opposite side so that, as you can see, this can stick through right here. That one's not made for it, but it's just a viewing lens, you can see. And uh, printing small detailed pieces works very well. This is a uh, winding key for film. That's pretty cool. And I've enjoyed it. Of course, when we continue, I guess the final thing is to make all of the optics fit. And I've got some optics right here. These are nice different glass optics that go through. They fit well. They all require small pieces. And the printer has been able to produce those quite well, actually. Final thing to know is that no matter what happens when you're using the printer, it's a you-figure-it-out solution. And there, is, uh, there may be support from Monoprice. I don't know. I have not contacted them with any of the questions or, or comments or concerns that I've had. I've just gone online to figure it out. I've enjoyed operating that way with this printer, and the results have been very, very gratifying for me. In fact, the draft copies of lots of these things actually have a texture and a look to them that I really like for the type of prototype that I've got right now. And I don't know. I mean, I, I really dig the uh, the cross hatching that comes out of here, so it's pretty cool. So you can get some really cool detail out of it. Those have been my experiences. I've had a great time with it. I hope that this has been helpful for you. Guys, if you want to know more about the Ham Camera Company project, the Ham Cam, the box camera that's going on, if you're interested in a modular camera design like this where you can put it in and just rock and roll, let me know down in the comments below. Find me everywhere at The Box Is Back. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. We were looking just at my use for the Monoprice Mini Select. This is the version 2. I've had a great time with it, and I want to thank you for watching. It's a definite buy, if you don't mind doing a little work. Other than that, I mean, right out of the box, <laughs> it was great. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. and remind you that we, Nico and myself, will catch you on the flip side.